This is Craig Brooksby with the Estates LLC coming to you live from Houston, Texas. And this is Paola and Walter. And so today we're gonna to be looking at a house here that we got uh, fully renovated and it's now under contract. A couple things we wanna look at with this home is it's at the end of a cul-de-sac. So right now, if you just wanna span it, you're gonna see uh, the neighborhood. It's kind of a mid, middle income neighborhood. about this house is right now the lawn is not mowed and the reason is because it's under contract now normally I would still mow my lawn if I didn't even know it was under contract but in this case it's under contract it's ready to close he doesn't have his lawn mowed you never know when the buyer is going to come by and check the house out and that's probably a little bit of a downer to see it the way it is right now but we're going to go on in and check out the house and take a look at it what you want to look at on this house is basically the staging and uh, we're gonna look at how it's fully furnished and what that did for this house and what it may not have done for the house when people looked at it. So let's go ahead and go on in. So as I walk in, the first thing I am impressed with is the openness. The trend is to have an open concept i do realize the kitchen is not is not a total open concept but i can tell that my home could be very well lived in because there's i can see the upstairs i can see the downstairs and i can even see through the backyard and i can already tell there's a pool so i already i'm already excited i think there's a lot to this house and i just took two steps in the next thing i like is that there is already a setup of furniture so it's giving me an idea of what would happen if i had my family have their dinners here or their evenings or their get together so i really like the layout of the space and the choice of furniture because it's generic but it's very comforting there's plush the color scheme brings me in and i also feel that um, some pieces make me feel like this house is quality. It has uh, an upscale um, environment, and I'm not really noticing much about the home. I'm noticing a lot about the quality of the furniture, the layout of the furniture. Do I like the way this picture looks, or do I like the way that um, mantle is set up? So I'm focusing a lot on that, and I'm not really noticing and there's a blue light by the bar that there may be uh, the wrong type of paint on the ceiling which is shiny and not flat. I do notice this floor if I'm not a, a very well, um, if I don't recognize very well flooring, then this is perfect. This trend is perfect, this hardwood flooring, but it is just, um, it's a laminate right this is a lemon and glue down flooring so this is also a nice way to give the look and not spend the expense of the real hardwood floors i also like about the house it is it's, the furniture is well distributed around and also feel clouded it just doesn't the house doesn't look so busy so you still can walk around and have a little areas that you can stay on you have in this area the dining room the, the living room, and you have those accent chairs in the corner, and, and the good point is that you see the pool all the way in the back, so it's invitating you to, there's a lot of things to do in the house. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. Uh -huh. So, I think it was very, very well done, stage-wise. Okay, what I'm seeing with the house is, is I walk into the house and I look at this, it looks open, and then, kind of like what you're saying, the furniture takes away from the distractions with the ceiling, like you said. And then what I do is, is I walk in here, I look over here to the right, and I see the dining room table. And that looks like it's well set up. The furniture looks real good. You got the, the uh, pictures on the wall. And so this presents really well, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, in both cases, in the family room and in the dining room, this is really kind of lays out well. Mm -hmm. The thing I thought was interesting that you said, Paola, is that the kitchen really isn't an open floor plan, uh -huh. right? But in this particular case, there's enough opening in here that it seems to kind of overcome that. And we're not gonna remove that wall right there, so we're kind of stuck with it, right? So let's go ahead and go on into the kitchen and see what it looks like. 
So I am noticing in the kitchen that there is a kitchen island. It's a big plus to have a kitchen island. I see a double oven. And for many ladies, this is a very big plus for big family gatherings. I do like the setup. I don't feel crowded. Some things that may not be of my choice would be, I don't have granite tops. I don't have um, marble or um, the newer styles. I also see that I don't have the undermounted sink. So it's not exactly the newest trend, but I do recognize that those items are things I could change or I could have done because I love the layout of the home. I also realize some of this layout is better because the kitchen sometimes is messy. So when you have people come in your home, they don't see the mess in your kitchen. So that is a big plus. The fact that you actually um, can see the upside of not having the total open concept because a lot of people keep a messy kitchen. Now, I just walk in and realize that I also have a dinette and this feature is very good in a large home like this. I believe this is a 3,000 and some square feet home. Uh, what, it's David, over 3, what's 000. the square feet in this house? Do you remember? Is it 2,400, 2,200? I think it's over 3,000 and that's why the common square. Is 2,419 square feet? No, 3,400. 3,400. She's very so, good. She's, she's this so I really like knowing that um, that the home has a lot of not only conversational areas in the main, but I also in the kitchen it's not crowded. I've got space. I've got a kitchen island, and I also have a nice big dinette. I mean breakfast area, not just a little corner. So I could even have a much bigger table if I wanted to, or if my family was a bigger family, I could see a bigger. Table. I'm, not, I'm not too worried about is this too crowded in the kitchen. What I see, which is interesting in this kitchen, is the, this used to be a Formica countertop. And what they did is they did a multi coat epoxy on it and gave it a granite look. And so if you take a look at this, this, this counter actually is a Formica countertop that now looks more like it's almost like a stone. And so that's a really inexpensive finish that can bring out a kitchen and make it look a little better. The other thing is, is this kitchen has tile countertops, as, as Powell said, it's got oak cabinets, which are a ten tendency to be oak dated or outdated. And the budget just didn't allow us to go any better on this home. One of the reasons for that is, is this house is actually one of the largest homes in, home in the neighborhood. There's only four homes that in this track development were 3,400 square feet or around that. The rest of them are lower price and value. So one of the things we had to do on this house is we had to basically make it so that we hit a price point that made sense, that was in the overall cost point of the neighborhood, and still give them more bang for buck and get that for the buck and get that price as high as we possibly could. So in this particular case, this house comped at roughly around two hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars based on the fact that it was a larger home in the neighborhood, so the price was going to be pulled down. So the, one of the things we couldn't do is we couldn't come in here and put granite in the house because it would have ran our budget over and we would have never picked it up on the, on, the, on the long run on this house. And so in this particular case, what we did is we did some pretty inexpensive fixes. We left things the way that they were and because they were functional so that we could create value to the house. So one of the things you're going to see is, as you walk through this house, you're going to see that the furnishing, the staging, actually makes this house look richer than it is. It draws your eyes away from some of the imperfections. As an example, if you look right there at that ceiling fan, if you'll notice, the painting was never painted right around the edge of that, that fan, right? And also, a ceiling fan is not what you put on top of a breakfast table. Say that again? You do not put a ceiling fan on the of a breakfast table. You put a chandelier. Yeah, so that's right. the staging does draw you away from the little things that you may or may not need to. And again, since in my opinion the flooring is in trend and good, then I am not objecting so much because changing flooring on a home makes me think of a lot of thousands and a lot of uncomfortable situations. I have to move all of my furniture. I've got to have a messy 
situation or, or just even you have to buy this house plus the flooring. So knowing that the flooring is already what I would like, I don't mind doing the little fixer uppers of the counters or painting the kitchen cabinets or changing a light fixture, which is not a major renovation that that changes everybody's lifestyle for two weeks or three weeks. Okay. All right, so we got a little pantry here, right there. Looks like it's okay. Nothing, nothing um, to really go over too much there. Just white, nice shelving. And here you got a laundry room. It's pretty simple. You're trending here with your colors that are kind of the gray colors with the brown floors with the white trim. I think everything looks good there. You got a good shot out the, the window there. Um, and then if we come around here, I think there's a little powder room right here. So as you can see, this one actually, this one here is actually, if you notice, it's not in trend. It's not a brushed nickel. So what they have here is an oil rub bronze, but it still looks pretty nice because you got a nice, you got nice um, light fixture there, the way the mirrors hung, the towel bar, the, the sink, the pedestal sink, the fixtures that are about it, you got an elongated toilet. So once again, this thing isn't in trend as far as brushed nickel, but it does hold together and look good. And that's one of the things we had to do in this budget is we had to make sure that we stayed at a low budget because we had a, a, a larger home in a smaller neighborhood. And so we don't have a lot of money from a renovation side to do a whole lot of things to make it look as nice as you normally would. That's another thing about the staging or the furnishing of the house is that's gonna make a big difference. Let's go ahead and walk out to the back pool area because that's kind of where the house is pulling us next to see what's outside in the back there. So as you um, step right out, it's the very first thing you think about. I can't wait to get into this pool because it's clean, it's blue. Notice how it's not um, the latest uh, design of pool or it doesn't have the latest color or uh, the latest um, features that pools have nowadays, but the fact that you're in Houston and COVID has brought everybody inside and locked us up. So this is probably one of the number one features this house has, that it would allow families to envision themselves having a much better situation and a much better scenario with their own pool, with their own space. And it is quite a large, large backyard. You see the pool and you still feel that there's plenty of space for a table for your barbecue for a kid having maybe a swing set. There, I see a tree over there. So I haven't even gone further and I can tell there's way more back there. I'm very satisfied with the size of the backyard. And again, focus is I want this house because I can see myself already in the school and I want to get out of where I'm at. I want to be in this house. One of the things I noticed about this is once again, the house is larger than the rest of the neighborhood. And if you look down on the deck, you're gonna see that the deck is not finished off. It's dated, it's not taken care of. Um, once again, there's weeds on the deck and that's it's already under contract. So he's not as worried about selling it right now. Although I'm sure he's gotten the maintenance man that'll be here any day now. So we're kind of shooting this thing live. But the fact of the matter is, is the deck is really not finished off. And once again, you're gonna see that the reason it's not is because we had a budget that we had to stay in because if we did too much renovation on this home, we would have priced ourselves out of the market, which is critical. So the other thing you can notice is if you look at the top, up at the, at the eaves and, the, and the, um, the brick and everything about the house, it's not in perfect order right now. Now that wire looks like it just came down. I'm sure you'll reattach that because that'll be fixed before they do their final walk through. You know, you can see fine things like the plate over there. But once again, the, the goal of this house was to get them a house that looked good on the inside, to get them a pool that they could use. And it's by no means perfect on the exterior. If you kind of walk around this one, I'm gonna show you a little bit more on this other side of the yard that Paolo was talking about. We're gonna take a look at what we see over there as well too. Um, what I see over here, if you look at it, there's two air conditioning units. Those are both carriers. So they're their higher end unit, but they're extremely dated, okay? Once again, one of the problems we had with this house, and like I said, I'm gonna dismiss the landscaping right now because it's under contract. Should you keep the house maintained during your under contract? Definitely yes. In this case, that's one of the things that we'll talk to the, the seller about. 
But at the end of the day, one of the things that I really like about this house is that we have a huge house in a small neighborhood and we just flat out do not have the budget and renovation. So in this case, we had to bring those units up to speed and you could have painted the exterior on and made them look a little nicer, which once again is a cost that he has to expense. But you gotta try to make this thing to where the value is there based on the size of this home in the neighborhood. It's a little different than the last house we walked in Houston because that one was more in line with everyone in the neighborhood. Where this one here, we had, to, we had to cut major costs in order to bring it in under budget and still create a house that was in the price range that someone would want to buy. Yes, I like about the house, uh, the one it's a lot of space. I can see the kids playing around. You can have a pool there. You still can play the football here, you know, with the ball have the places that all of that, you know, they have a, this you know, kids protection around the pool. The poly, in my opinion, has to be removed because it's not doing any purposes of what the security around the pool should be doing. So probably it's an extra thing, but in general, the backyard is very big and, and it's very nice. Okay, let's go on and back on in inside the house. All right, so what I've done is I've just come in from the backyard and I'm back into the center of the house. So I walk right out in from that door, straight into the family room. Once again, this is my presentation right here. So I got a dining room, I got a family room, I got the stairs, but it feels really open to me. I'm not gonna worry as much about that kitchen because I got the dual doors here, but I still feel pretty good. And what's really drawn me into this house is the staging that's done in this area right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on into the next room over here. Okay, so in this case, we're now in the master bedroom. You can see that it's fully staged. So if you look around, we got good presentation. We got this trend colors, which are gray with the accented pillows. We also, once again, I always talk about this, your bed should not have a footboard because what footboards do is they actually close the room in. So when you have a footboard, it raises up high and closes the room in. The new trend is to open it up. So when you walk into the house, there's no footboard there. You can see there's a pedestal and you have the mattress and the bed there with the nice pillows and the, and the nightstands on each side and the, and the decorations on both sides as far as the pictures and whatnot. But as a general rule, this, this, this room, as a general rule, this room feels wide open. What do you think, Paola? I, it's a trick of the stager. I can tell that they've used a queen size, which is probably not the normal size a master would have, but the buyer's not even thinking of this because they love what is done. And the way that they've made this queen size look much grander is by adding a double box to make it taller. And so it does, plus the, the grandiose setup of like, this is the stage and here's your, the, the focus, there's not a lot of trinkets everywhere. There's just two areas. Here's your bed and here's your conversational area. So that by itself does make it seem very royal and you do not concern yourself, is this a king size or not? What I like about it being a queen is that it allows me to believe this room is larger than it is because the king size would have occupied more space Therefore, when it made me think, could I fit a third of this or that, or could I have a desk? Some people are having desks now in their bedrooms. And I do like, you know, just the soft touches that it does allow me to think, could I have all of the furniture I have? Sometimes you see people that have way too many furniture in their bedrooms, and they, as they're looking for a home, they're concerned, is my furniture going to fit here? This is a very nice, nice room, but the fact that you have smaller furniture does allow it to feel larger. Another thing that I notice here for the minister point of view is no TV in the room. And we always talk about that put a TV in the room, blah, 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 blah. But in the fact that it doesn't even have a TV, I just notice it. I don't notice it right when, right when I get into the room. Have another, like a mirror and all that. So when you don't have a TV in the room, looks like the room is more for relaxing and just for resting, that, that's what you use in the room for, mm -hmm. instead of going to watch TV in the room. So actually it looks nice without a TV. Okay, sounds great. Let's go ahead and go on into the master bedroom here. Her bathroom is also um, a very large bathroom. It is kind of long, feels a little bit narrow. 
and I noticed the tile. The tile is not my favorite. It's dark, but I do see some benefits. I have a double sink, and that's a big plus. And I see a bathtub and jets, another big plus that people do like, and separate shower. Looks like you also have the bathroom over here. So we're gonna go ahead and show you that there. One thing a lot of people always do is they leave the lids up on the toilet. It's one of the worst things you can possibly do. You wanna make sure that that lid is closed down on that toilet so that it shows well. <laughs> And of course, as a woman, I want to see the closet space. I want to see how big is this closet. And I do like the size. I notice it's not really a walking closet, as some are that are like an extra room, but I see plenty of shelving, plenty of space for the myriad of shoes. And this is definitely the ladies' closet. And this is gonna be mine, but of course it's too small, but <laughs> over the ladies' closet is bigger. So this is a good size closet anyway, so. So now what we're gonna look at on this particular property is we're gonna look at the transition between the downstairs being fully furnished or staged and what happens when we go upstairs. Remember, once again, this is a house that's the largest home in the neighborhood. So we don't have the budget to do a full renovation on this house. We have to pick and choose what we're gonna to do to keep the cost down so that we give the family that buys this house the value. So this is an imperfect home. As you look right here, you can see that the, that the, uh, the switches on the wall are the old ivory color, right? And there's even other things that could be done here, a little bit of cleaning on that security alarm and the switches could take place right now. Now, I know this was all clean when we saw it, but it's a little bit dirty right now. That could be cleaned up, but you're gonna see it live, right? That's what we're giving to you right now. But what you wanna do is pay attention to what happens to the house as you start to go upstairs and and how it presents itself. So let's go ahead and go on upstairs. Okay, so now we're entering in. If you contrast this with the last house we went into, there's gonna be a real different contrast here. If you remember when we came upstairs to the last house we were in, it was fully furnished on the upstairs. And now when I come into this house, and I, and I don't see that fully furnished, I got new carpet, okay? I got the accent wall, I have the gray paint, okay? But what I notice is other things start to appear. So as you look right now, Walter, as you come upstairs at Paola, what is it you notice when you're in this room? The wall plates, they're, they're old. So you notice that it's something that probably won't cost too much to replace, but it is drawing my attention to those little details that are not perfect. Mm -hmm. I, as I was coming up the stairs, I noticed that I'm looking at commercial property out the window, and so thoughts start going through my mind. Oh, am I going to have a concern for that? Do I like having a commercial property behind my property or not? To some, mm -hmm. that's a good thing, not having backyard neighbors, and to some, having commercial property behind their home is a negative. But if, if there would have been uh, furniture or something else to distract me. Mind you, there is staging at the bar for me to look at, to, to realize this is a, a game room and it is quite large. This is, this is not your average. I would say this is a larger game room than most. But, um, but yeah, not having the furniture also doesn't allow me to do a scale of, could I have here two large couches, a sectional, a hockey table, could I have two two areas like a TV and a, and a study area. Or, so, so I would say one of the pluses of having the furniture is to allow the buyers to realize that they could divide the room in sections or that they could have as much furniture as they would like or, or just mm -hmm. giving them, prompting them for ideas of what they could do mm -hmm. in the room. Yes, to mm -hmm. see how much space we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this space. 
we can fit two couches in a, in a, in a, in a sitting area, or we can do this or that. Give you an idea so the person who's buying the house can see herself in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when the space is so open, you still, you only come to houses for a show in the last, what, 15 minutes, 20 mm -hmm. minutes at the most. Mm -hmm. You don't have all that to your mind to make a decision, but when the furniture is around, you can see yourself in that, in, in that area. Well, you know, one of the things that you just mentioned there that's interesting to me, when we walked that other house, is I came up the stairs and I got to the family, or to the upstairs, I will actually notice I just kind of did a, a slip there and went to a family room, right? Uh -huh. Do you normally think of the upstairs room as a family room? No, but when I saw those couches that were big and it made me feel warm and plush and, hey, this looks like a great room. And this one, when I go upstairs, it's vacant. So I don't really feel that same feeling, right? And so, it's, and like you said, you notice the plugs. Well, do we want our buyer to notice the plugs? No. 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 Right, so in this case, the other thing I thought was interesting is, as we as we went and looked at the rooms, one of the things we talked about is, um, as I talked to the seller on the home, she said that the buyers would come upstairs, look at everything, and then if they liked the home, they would come in and sit down on the couch and talk about it for longer. Oh. So, so right now, if you think about it, as we're standing here, my feet get tired, right? Because I've been walking around the house. And so your natural tendency is when you come up the stairs and you look at everything, you're gonna do an evaluation of the home and here you don't have an opportunity to sit and enjoy the home because there's nothing here in the room. So it's gonna force you down the stairs and out of the house without allowing to take it in a little bit more. You just come in. Yeah, you feel like a stick talking and you just come to see it and you have to go. Yeah. So we have been in situations where we have to describe the home because every other home has just walls and bathrooms and so how can you really so be the home with the furniture exactly and, and that in that statement would get you keep yeah. it more it would, it would remember the house with a nice couch in the corner yeah. oh yeah. yeah i remember yeah you know? what's interesting about that is the way you say that right there is you you're you're when you're in the middle of a renovation one of the things are is when you're an investor and you're buying a house and you're getting it you're going to flip it your renovation budget can really make a difference on your margin because the more you renovate the more it costs you in this case, we have an investor in this home who's looking at it saying, I was able to get a buy with a low budget invest or, or a low budget investment into the home and still deflect it by furnishing and making it look good. The problem we have here is we come upstairs and we don't have that same cell all the way around. So it's interesting how our, our attention detracts and goes a different direction. Let's go ahead and see which way do we go. So when we come up the stairs here, Paola, you walk up here, oh. which way are you naturally forced to go? I would naturally come this way. And that was my thought too. Yeah, so the same thing. Yeah, walk is something on the left. Yeah, right, so we just naturally kind of follow this way. I would now realize I'm looking at a home that doesn't have furniture, so I have to change my expectation or change my perception of the home. But one of the things I got when walking to this room, I noticed that there is very high quality windows. This house has very high quality windows. Hmm. Okay, so you got some vinyl windows out there on the outside yeah. that you notice they're not like an old Wooders. Uh, and it's very important to use them to have better efficiency. Insulated, and insulated windows. And they are new and through the house. Yeah. So, so that's a big uh, plus. And that's also. Yeah, exciting. I actually noticed the kitchen window was not new though. Yeah. Exactly. It was a garden window that, that, that mm -hmm. isn't new. Good. The thing is, is my mind now goes to the ceiling fan. Mm -hmm. So what did you, what did your direction change? So what are you focusing on now? The windows, the, the window ceiling the fan, the light socket, mm -hmm. because now there's nothing else in this room to discuss, to, mm -hmm. to discuss, right? You can see that it has new carpet. You can see it's been painted, but at the end of the day, the room doesn't give you the warmth of the feel to sell you on. Yeah. So there's this change in momentum as we start to come I upstairs. I think having no furniture is only have one plus that you can see how big it is or not. It's the only one plus. I don't see any any more positive things or not having it. Because you can see, oh, this room is big or not. Because you can realize small room is a big room. So as a woman, how does that affect you that 
he's saying that you see it as a bigger room as opposed to a furnished room, which is going to do more for you if you're looking at this house? Well, um, not everything is about a big room because if you have a certain number of kids, it's important to have a certain, certain number of rooms. Something I wanted to point out is that in Houston and in certain neighborhoods where you may have uh, just, you know, the kind of the makeup of the, the demographic makeup of the neighborhood, there are certain uh, cultures that have a mother-in-law living with them. And when you have that scenario, I think this is the case for this neighborhood where you may have a mother-in-law living with you. It is good to see if there's any benefit to having, I think this house even has a benefit to have a mother-in-law. You can have the mother-in-law and have um, your kids' room, separate rooms. Okay, sounds good. Let's go on to the next room. This is the monologue room. I think it's the other one because it's separate. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm coming out, and the first thing I want to see is I want to look at the bathroom. Okay, so what you're going to notice here is as you turn your camera this way into the bathroom, what you're going to notice here is this is an interesting bathroom, and the reason I say that is because it has kind of a privacy wall to the toilet. It actually has curtains over the shower, which those look really nice. They're staged well, and I look at it, and it has a shower door that's chrome and old and dated, but the curtain actually hid that door, right? And it's got the older dated tile, but actually by putting that curtain right over the front of that thing, how does that make that place look? The other thing which is interesting about this bathroom is, is that they really didn't do a whole lot in here that I can tell from a renovation perspective. Everything that's in here was in here when they started on this house. You can even see they even have the brown trim around the door there. And then that matches the brown, um, yeah, there's a brown and ceiling, brown the brown ceiling. Ceiling. And there's brown uh, uh -huh. light switch and plugs. But I thought also thought that I thought this was cool how they staged a little sitting stool right yeah. there. You know, where you can put your foot on it or whatever, or sit down or whatever in the bathroom. So they made use of kind of that dead space. So in my opinion, this is a perfect way how staging can make something imperfect perfect. The light fixture is not centered. Here's your sink, and you have a tiny mirror. But the fact that there is, they've made a purpose for this area, which is random. Why Great would point. you have space? Great point. So they've put a stool there to make it seem like it's purposeful. They have some artwork to make it light, so the whiteness makes the room less dark. And then that other light fixture, which happens to be not your normal bathroom fixture. So all of those things are not that important because the, the staging brings me into a different train of thought i think i like it i love the flower i love this and and i do like that there's some some things that are new they're not so common you know even though this bronze it may not be in trend it's right dated, now yeah. but it's still it's a different nice. type of fixture that you know not everybody gets to have so i i think the staging that's kind of interesting as you look at it they did the same picture above the toilet as they did to the left side so it actually kind of pulls this room in together with those pictures which is kind of an interesting thing. And you're right, you got the oil rub, rub bonds, which is out of trend. It's still considered acceptable because it's one step back in trend. But yeah, I just noticed that that mirror looks really small right there. But you know what's amazing about this house? This house had, mm, I think we listed it low at 250,000. And it had, if I remember correctly, right around 100 showings. And I think we ended up with, you know, 15, 20, 25 offers, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. So it was a larger house, low budget. We had to do the, the least we possibly could so we could price it right, and we pulled in $290,000 for the home. Amazing that we could do that in this neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go on out to the next room. Well, um, I'm used to going down a the hallway, there's a bathroom and two rooms. And I just noticed there's three rooms, which brings me in a positive of, wow, I can really have a room dedicated to an office, a home office, because COVID has made everybody now work at home, or and my, each one of my kids can have a room, or just more space. Yeah, once again, I noticed with this room, and I like what you're saying as far as we said what there's five bedrooms in this house mm -hmm. so five bedrooms with the pool makes it really a family house yeah. but once once again it's a family budget type home 
So the family, the average median price in this neighborhood is probably no more than $250. We're well above that now, and we've got to keep the budget down in order to get into the more square footage, five bedrooms, the pool, and everything that way. So you're looking at that deck down there and saying, wow, they didn't finish it off. And it's, you know, you look at the fence out there and it's still gray. It hasn't, we didn't paint it or pressure wash it off to give it back its natural color because it wasn't in the budget. So we had to hit, we had to renovate this house in a way that we were able to keep it in the budget to where it was a good deal. What we missed on this house is we should have fully furnished it. Because what I notice again is, is when I walk into this room, I look at the sockets, and if you look right here next to Walter's Lake, you can see that we have a white plate with an old dated socket. Doesn't look good. I also, my, my mind went to the fan. Now, luckily the fan looked good. It was kind of cool because the blades are spinning two different ways. That's kind of a nice, cool fan, but it's really not where my mind should be going in a house like this. Yeah. When you walk in, if it's an empty room, you just don't get that same feeling as if it's fully furnished and staged well, room by room by room. How old is this house? I don't know how old this house is. It's uh, I would say because 80s. I, the, uh, one thing that I noticed in the house is all the doors are six panels. Doors. Yeah, they which are is, six Which panels. is modern, you know? Yeah, that is make, true. Make it look better and, and, and dated. You know, it, that I like about it, the doors are six are pounds. Six pounds. And, and that's brush nickel. Brush nickel. Yeah. yeah, yes. Yeah, so it's if we would change the doors like that and all the light switches here will be perfect. Without a coordinator, but you, you can see that everything is done. Yeah, you see here, the last, this plate is new, but this is old. Yeah, it is. Probably doesn't cost too much. It is a dollar and twenty cents each one. By the time, how many? By times, how many? Yeah, it starts yeah, exactly. to add up. Exactly. But so it's then again, without the furniture, you still, even if you fix these, which I do agree, fixing those, if it's within the budget, but I still pay attention to things that are. Um, little issues in the shiva is there a leak is there a damage was there a hole was there a patch so i i'm sold on definitely furnishing the whole home to have been in this place. home before so i knew that there was this room that has their ensuite so i know this is a big selling point because you have the ability to have a long-term guest with the only bathroom. Mm -hmm. I remember this bathroom now. Uh -huh. And so it is a bonus, but there's some details that may not be everyone's favorites, like the flooring. Of course, there's some issues there with the tile missing, but so the flooring is antiquated and there's, you know, the old countertops, the faucet is not updated. I'm still thinking, I've got another bathroom, I've got another walk-in closet. There's a lot of value in this home. Yeah, it is a second master. Like you said, it's an in-suite. But what's interesting, man, I remember looking at this house the last time we came up here, and I thought, gosh, that floor just looks ugly. It's so old and faded, right? Mm -hmm. And once again, they didn't have the budget for it, mm -hmm. but because they're getting the bang for the buck. So what did the renovator do on this house? He came in, he put new carpet in, so they got new carpet everywhere. He painted the walls, but he didn't do much else on the upstairs. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think is cool about this is that floor there is a tough one. But what's amazing to me is he still pulled in his buyer and got a high price for it. So that floor was overcome by some family who said, we really don't care about it. It's good enough for us. We're getting a bigger house for the value, yeah. Sorry. right? But what I do think is, I think at the end of the day, one thing that's really cool to me, and I think it showed it downstairs as opposed to upstairs, is the fact of the matter is, is when we walked into this house, it popped. The furnishing looked great, but when I'm upstairs here, is all I'm doing is looking at walls and light switches and fans. That's what and we're being talking all the time. Yeah, about yeah. The, the this and that, it was missing this and missing that. When we were downstairs, we weren't talking about any of that. We were talking that. about the furniture, yes. look at how that looks like. Mm -hmm. And in this room, the bed looks like it, how the accent and all that. Mm -hmm. we were here, we don't have, we've been talking everything but the imperfection. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because I think, and David and I, we, when we talked about the house, sell this house, we felt like we should have furnished the upstairs. 
because we came upstairs and it was a letdown to us, right? Even though even though they still bought it for the price that we got, it was a letdown. And I, and I, I keep thinking in my mind as I'm walking around, what would have happened had everything been fully furnished up here you think with a trend? Yeah, and mm -hmm. would it have pulled in more money? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we got 290 for the house, but if it was fully furnished upstairs. The other thing is, is one of the things about fully furnishing a house is that furniture leaves and goes with you when you're finished. So you keep it. So you keep it. It's an investment, not, a, not, a, not an expense. Yeah, that's that's right. It's, it's an initial expense, but once it's off th set through the house and you make more money off the houses that you do or you use other strategies, the value of that furniture is it leaves and goes. So once that furniture goes, then people walk in and they see the light switches and everything else, but by then they closed on the house and they now own it. Uh -huh. So it's bought already. So the, so the one of the cool things I think about fully furnishing a home, and this is what you don't hear any one of the experts in the field doing, and this is what we found works strategically. This house was actually staged by a professional stager. Okay, that's what's critical here. Okay, so they did a great job downstairs, but the, but what a stager does is they, they only stage certain rooms. And what I found is, is if you're coming into a house and you want to cut your numbers down, there's a lot of things you can cut out of a renovation if you put the furniture in to distract. And when you put the furniture in to distract, that allows you to cut your cost down and still pull a greater value because that furniture creates that distraction. And it also builds the warmth and allows you to see more clearly what it is you're getting into. Um, I noticed here, even in looking at this room here, I saw a red ceiling fan, right? Mm -hmm. And with white, which is considered extremely dated. My favorite. Right? So we've got the gray walls, we've mm -hmm. got the gray carpet, and then we, we bam, right here. Mm -hmm. this, go ahead. Do you know what I'm sorry about? The other thing is, I think when you put the money on the furniture, Yes, you keep the furniture, and you can spend that money in, th in things that really matter. Like, the AC is not working, we have a leak, something that really matters at, at the time of selling, oh, the, inspection, the, the, inspection, the inspection can come up with, okay, we're going to yeah, buy it, but you have to fix this, 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 this. Yeah. Right? You, yeah. just, you put the furniture and distract the money, the, the, the money you're going to spend in the small little things when they really matters, which is leaks or AC or, or well, I mean, all the stuff or, or any tile, yeah. something that really matters that at the time of the inspection is going to stop for selling the, the property. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right, let's head on downstairs. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do right now is rate this house. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to say, what was your overall ranking when you came into the house on the downstairs? How was it on the rear yard? And then how was it on the upstairs? So Walter, let's have you go ahead first and tell us how would you rank it from A to F? How would you rank it as you came in the house and you looked at that first area? Well, when I came into the house, as we parked outside, the first thing I noticed, it was the landscaping. You know, as a man, probably I don't care too much unless I, I'm the one who's gonna mow them all. So I wanna see if it's big or not, how much I got to mow, or how much I had to pay for, for mow the lawn. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, this is a big land to mow, right? Right, good but, point. You know, and I think, I'm gonna do it or not, I'm not sure how much this house is gonna cost me just yet, I didn't, I didn't close just yet. If I get a good deal, probably I'm gonna go to that stand. So now I have to maintain the pool. It's a lot of maintenance that I have to take care of it. as a man, you know? There's things that the wife don't do. Mm -hmm. Or even I do it or I pay for somebody to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So with that point of view, for me it's like a B or C because there's a lot of things to do. So are but, you seeing a B in the yard area? Yes. Okay. But you look in another way, I buy a nice house, a, a nice piece of land, but at the end of the day, this is what it matters. My, my investment is in the land. Okay. You know, so I get a big house, a big lot, that is a, is a plot. So It'll help that makes it that make make back that to the A point. Okay. So you think it's an A from the exterior? Yeah, exactly. Okay, sounds good. All right, so what did you feel about the ranking as you walked through the first floor? I really love it. I really love it. Wow, that's interesting to hear what you're saying there because I want to stop you right there for a second. 
We all know that when you looked at that first floor that we had an epoxy finish on Formica, we had a tile countertop on the center island, right? We saw rings around the light, but your comment was, what again? I love it. And why did you really love it? The space. The space that I can see myself in that furniture. There's a lot of seating area. A lot of, I had the, the dining room. I had the living room. I had the dining in the kitchen, right? My master is downstairs, right? The kids can be upstairs doing their thing. I'm still downstairs, right? And I still have a lot of walking area around. It's a little bar right there that I can have my drinks with my friends and all that. Everything can be done downstairs without going upstairs. Okay, so I want, to notice, I want you guys to notice something here that I just did. I asked him a question, and was his answer short or long? Long. It was long, right? It was short, it was long, right? I should be doing that with you guys again. So once again, because I keep getting distracted with Lauren. So what I'd say is... <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'd say is what's interesting about what you just did, though, is when I asked you that question, you went into a long explanation. And what I keep thinking in the back, back of my mind is, you yeah, really yeah. love this house. And so much so that he continued to talk about it. But what blows me away is I saw the pool deck that was undone. There were wires that were disconnected down there. The air conditioning was old. He paid attention to the yard and he's still giving this house an A. Did you see that? Did you see that, Paola? Mm -hmm. And so why is it? So you're an A, okay, so why do you think he gave it an A? Or what do you give that downstairs area, Paola? Uh more than an A plus because it wow. allowed me to feel how I would live in this house. The that a professional separated and set the furniture gave me a standard or a template for me to then come in and do. And so because the professional set it up in the way it did, it allowed me to feel that the house was beyond what I thought it would be, not just a room, but that I would have within a room three little areas or four. That, uh, so there's way too much space in this house. You said that this house is bigger than all the other houses in the neighborhood. There were That's right. maybe only three. So then my realtor's telling me that this is the biggest house, that this is the biggest bank for the buck. This is, an, mm. um, this is a seller's market. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I'm in a house where it's below the average cost of a house like this. So mm. I feel like Good I don't want to get away. I don't want this bargain to get away from me. And it pleases me in every way. I have the areas I want, I want the master I want, I have the extras, the luxury. Now this house doesn't have luxury. We don't, we're not talking about uh, marble countertops, but I feel like there is luxury because of the fact that I have a pool. That, I mean, and that in Houston is a minimum $45,000 expense. Mm -hmm. So I can maybe, if I know, and I've done my research, I know that that's a $45,000 expense. Maybe it's not a brand new pool, but so yeah. that makes me feel that there's a lot of luxury in this home because there's a lot of space. And I can also maybe um, benefit from the upside of I'm buying at a low price. Again, I don't know what's happening. I think this house is worth 250 because that's what it's listed. I can buy at a low price and, and let the market go up and I can stay in this home for a long time because it's so big. I can have all of my family grow and I don't feel, t I don't feel crowded. I don't feel like, this, this this house is too small. So wow. the size of the house and the set and the layout made me ignore every little fault the house has. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna there's several things I'm gonna try to hit and just remember <laughs> everything you said. But once <laughs> again, <laughs> notice what she just did. Yes, yeah, she just rolled out again, right? Yeah. She was she was emotionally gratified by what I saw. Yeah, look at she's even finishing my statements, yes. right? So what's really interesting about this is I'm standing here up here on the second floor and my feet are in pain right now. <laughs> you know why? Because I've been standing for so long. Uh -huh. So once again, I think, man, if I had had a couch to sit down and have that discussion, it would have made all the difference in the world, right? Because then every would have, whoever was looking at this house would have walked in, they would come in and you mentioned, Walter, you mentioned the landscape one wasn't looking good now, right? Yeah. We know it's under contract, but if you imagine when we showed this house, everything was trimmed up nice, it looked great. But right now, when we hit it right now, I want to sit down and talk more about this house. But really, I could take it away from me and take you guys as husband and wife and say, you just kept going on and on and on about it. And I keep thinking to myself, wow, look at all of the imperfections in this home. Yeah. And you guys are still ranking it at an A, mm -hmm. right? And, and you went over several reasons why this was a great house. Mm -hmm. Just kind of an interesting perspective. It's the power 
of a fully furnished home yeah. and how it takes away from the negative things. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that I, th I thought was interesting about this house is this home does not have a wide open floor plan. It's got a bearing wall right through the middle of the family room and the kitchen, all right? But still that staging made a, made a big difference, right? Or that fully furnished look, right? Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, as you came upstairs, what did you rank the house? Well, uh, to be honest, I am so in love with the downstairs that I am making excuses for what I see upstairs. Wow, that's interesting. So what you're saying is, with the with the fully furnished downstairs the way it was and, and the pool and the yard and everything you're now making excuses so normally what we call it uh -huh. is a psychological nag to the negative side and now what she has is she has a positive nag to the upside or a positive yeah. influence to the upside I think right thing that's going heavier when and in, in this case the had those, those kind of furniture upstairs and you start saying oh but it's four rooms up here you have a game room, you have another sitting area in this corner, you have a little bar here, you can put your TV there, you can put your popcorn machine there, you can do a lot, of, you start figuring out in your mind. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I, I see of oh, this house is marked as a 250. So mm -hmm. what do I need to do to get it? Plus remember, this is not my room. This is not my, this is not my room, this are my kids' room. I can figure out what to do, I can go along mm -hmm. with it. My room is downstairs, and, and the master good. is going to be mine. Wow! <laughs> because of the way I mm, saw she's it, she's taking right? ownership of exactly. it. You see that? Exactly. So the way it was done was so pleasing, and it was generic. So it wasn't just for someone that is like me, but I think it was a generic layout that was so pleasing that it really satisfied and checked way too many boxes. And I don't want to pass on this house. Okay, so one of the things we do in listing houses is we price them low, we don't price them high. Because when you price them high and you talk down on price, that's not a good way to go because then it's a negative because it's too high. What she's really talking about here is to keep, I've heard her mention several times, this house was listed for 250. It actually went, we got it, it's under contract now for 290. So it raised 40,000 above its value. So when we priced it low, what it did is it stimulated the activity. There were people in and out of here every 15 minutes looking at this home and they drove that price right up into a value that we could afford. So we kept a low budget, which is right from the mm -hmm. renovator and the flipper. We got them emotionally converted right now. If you look at yeah. Walter and Paola, they're emotionally converted. We did a half furnish on the downstairs. So I got another question for you two. As a husband and wife, what do you think would have happened to you if you'd walked up here and this was fully furnished? I think there, I mean, obviously this house had an enormous amount of showings and offers. So that should be satisfying, but I think you would have had a higher price. You do. Okay, so let me just ask you that. And Walter, you were going to say something as well too? No, I, I really agree with, with Paola. I think you full of furnace and upstairs, they probably will cost probably 3000 more or yeah. 3000 dollars more. You will be sell this house probably in the three hundreds. With say you're gonna get ten thousand dollars more, taking the three thousand more expense, you will get a seven thousand more up on you on your, on your body. And then again, uh, on your price. So your wait price. a second. Let me just make sure I understand this. So you're saying if I had put three thousand dollars more into the furniture, which I could have left and taken with me at the end anyways, you will get ten thousand more. You get ten thousand dollars more. I definitely wow. believe it that. I wow, think you would have gotten even more than three hundred, but because of the three thousand, uh, more than three hundred thousand. Oh yeah, okay, more than three hundred thousand. I think you would have had to offer above because that's what a house this size would have. I mean, so it's three more than three thousand, thirty-four hundred square feet, and you're selling it under a hundred dollars a square foot. Yeah, that's a great price. It's an incredible bargain, even at the two ninety. Right. So I think you would have gotten above three hundred, but the issue would have then become how do we appraise and you would have had a buyer that needed to put a very large down payment to not mind if the appraisal wouldn't come. And you know, what are the, 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 the thing that probably you will see as a, as a con at the beginning, there's only three or four houses this big in the neighborhood, you say, well, it's gonna be hard to sell, go turn over into in a plus. Because now the buyers know, oh, this house is nice, and it's only three or four in the neighborhood, we need to get it. Yeah, I don't so know, honey, what you're gonna do, but well, we so need to get it. Because oh, it's it's it has five bedrooms, have a pool, have a big yard, 
It is nice. Look at what we can do here. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're gonna do, honey, but you have to get. It. Yes, that makes sense. Right. All right. You guys are sold. Sold. <laughs> three hundred thousand. Three hundred and ten thousand. They want the house. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I like what you're saying there. So that at the end of the day, then what we see is is that Walter and Paola were emotionally converted to the home. Mm -hmm. If it would have been fully furnished, they would have even been more emotionally converted to the home and it would have raised their price value. And one of the things we're gonna run as a test on this is, we just left a house in Houston, Texas where the, the staging was not properly done. The furnishing was not properly done. And so what we're gonna do now is we've now taken that house and we've actually just called the real estate broker and we've pulled that house from the market. Okay, now one of the things is, is when we pull that house from the market, I'll just tell you that's what we call a takeaway in sales, which happened naturally because we're taking it off the market to restage it. But one of the things that's interesting is, is the agent called me and said, hey, listen, we have someone that still wants to come and look at this home. Now that might pull in your offer right there at the end of the day, but we won't count on that, but we're actually gonna contrast here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna re fully furnish that house with the highest uptrend. I can tell you that that house, we just looked in the neighborhood, it was listed at, um, what do we price it at when we put it on the market? 275. 275. Okay, so we listed it under market because we figured we needed 300,000, right? Is that correct? So we listed 25 grand below. We only pulled in 12 showings, I think, on that. We had one author offer at 275 that's now withdrawn. So one thing you're gonna follow us through here is we're gonna do a fully furnished home, high up trend on everything we can do in that house yes, and make are. it pop to the nines and then see what happens. And what I'm gonna bet is that the emotional conversion of that house is gonna change like what you saw here today. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is only half the house furnished, right? Yeah. So we're gonna see, and that house actually had similar tenancies, right? There was a budget, we couldn't go all in with the full renovation, mm -hmm. very similar to renovations. I can tell you as I look at this house, what's funny is, is if you look at the stereo right here, you can see the paint marks on the ground, right? It's oak. It's oak. Finishes. I can't take my eyes out of that, that trim switch. there. So what's I can't that? Take the eyes out of that switch. Yeah, out of the switch. You know, the switches don't match. I was talking, I was looking at you, look at that switch. Look at you, look at that switch. Yeah, look at this here. We've got three different switches. We have kind of a bronzy looking, or copper looking switch, a wood switch. And, and a Santa Fe light fixture. It yeah, it's just really mixed up. <laughs> So we're gonna see, because these two houses are pretty comparable on the renovations. Budgets are tight, can't renovation, renovate it. We're gonna now do it, we're gonna run a test in our hypothesis to see what happens as we come back to that next house in Texas next week. So we appreciate you guys uh, coming today and uh, we're signing off. This is Craig with the Estates LLC and Paola and Walter. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.